Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on the basics of mobile device networking and synchronization. Today we're going to discuss basic network connectivity for mobile and then mobile device synchronization. And with that, let's begin this session. So we begin by talking about basic network connectivity for the mobile device. Now many mobile devices can take advantage of cellular data networks, whether that be 3G, 4G, or LTE. As the user, you need to know how to enable or disable this connectivity for when it's necessary, as in when you're traveling by plane. All of the operating systems that have cellular connections allow for the enable and disable function to be done from the settings area of the operating system. Some mobile devices also allow the user to enable or disable cellular networks from their home screen. Check with your documentation for the correct process for your mobile device. Another type of network connectivity for the mobile device is Bluetooth. A lot of them come with Bluetooth networking. Now, how do you do Bluetooth networking? Usually it's from the settings page on your mobile device. First off, you enable Bluetooth, then you enable pairing, and then you find the device for pairing. It usually comes up on the screen. Enter the appropriate PIN code when requested, and then test for connectivity. And while there may be some differences in the process, the basic steps remain the same. Now, one of the advantages of mobile devices is the ability to send and receive emails while on the go. As long as the user has an internet connection, email is possible. Some of the things that you need to know before you can utilize this function are the proper email configuration requirements. You need to know your SMTP, your Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. That's for sending emails. You need to know which protocol your service provider requires for receiving email. Is it POP3 or IMAP? You also need to know the fully qualified domain name for the email provider, both for the SMTP server and the incoming servers. You should also know what ports are being used for SSL, and these are determined by the email provider. So some common port settings for email. Well, SMTP has a default port of 25. SMTPS, which is the secure version, is 465. POP3 uses port 110, and POP3S uses port 995 by default. IMAP uses 143, and IMAPS, secure, uses port 993. The default configuration for Gmail would be pop.gmail.com on port 995 for their POP3 server. Their SMTP server is located at smtp.gmail.com and it's usually on port 587. And the security level is TLS, that's Transport Layer Security. Now let's move on to mobile device synchronization. Now each operating system uses its own method to synchronize data. You need to refer to your vendor for the specific process. Almost any type of data can be synchronized across a mobile device to their larger cousins and vice versa. A lot of people synchronize their contact information, programs, email, pictures, music, and videos. But you're not just limited to that. Now synchronization provides protection against lost equipment by providing a backup copy. It also allows for the free movement of data and keeps it current. Mobile device operating system providers have their own apps for synchronization. The app must be installed on the PC, so you should follow the vendor's instructions. Now there are several different connection types for synchronization. A lot of them allow for wireless or cellular synchronization. That's synchronizing to the cloud. You can also synchronize across wireless networks. With a lot of devices, you can also sync using a USB cable. With some devices, you can use Bluetooth networking to sync 
with a PC or another mobile device. It's not as common anymore, but it's still an option for some mobile devices. In the past, you could use infrared to sync devices, but that's no longer a current method. Now that concludes this session on basic mobile networking and mobile device synchronization. We talked about basic network connectivity for the mobile device and some synchronization methods and why you should synchronize your mobile devices. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm sure I'll do another one soon.